Hello and welcome to Isomath. Today we're going to be talking about the unit circle. Now remember, let's first go back to the basic equation of a circle. We know that the basic equation of a circle is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. And this will give us the equation of any circle with any center h k with a radius r squared. Well, the unit circle is nothing more than a circle with a radius of 1. So we have a radius equal to 1. And it's centered at the origin, which is 0, 0. So filling that in, obviously, we're going to end up starting off a unit circle. You can see our equation simply becomes nothing more than x squared plus y squared equals 1. And this is the justification for our unit circle. Now, the unit circle... This is going to help us set the table for our trig and some of our trigonomic functions that we're going to be dealing with later. So we need to first get comfortable with the unit circle. Here you can see the unit circle with the radius 1, and we need to know some special properties. And here we have our endpoints at 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, and 0, negative 1. So these are the endpoints around the unit circle because we know we have a radius 1. Now, sometimes we're going to be asked to solve some, ser uh, some questions involving the unit circle. For instance, this one. Find the points on the unit circle whose first coordinate are two-thirds. Well, we know the first coordinate is going to be an x value, so we're actually looking for an x value of two-thirds. And we want to know the corresponding y values that go with that. And as we can look, we know it's going to be somewhere around there as the two-thirds. And all we do to do to solve this essentially is we're going to be drawing a, a line, which is nothing more than x equals two thirds, and we're actually looking for this coordinate point. So we know it has two thirds as its x value, and we're trying to find out what its y value is. But we also have a point down here. This also has an x coordinate of two thirds, but this is obviously going to be having a negative y value, and we need to find out those two values is what we're asked to find. So here's how we go about solving that equation. We know that the unit circle is nothing more than x squared plus y squared equal 1. So we're looking for the x quantity we know is 2 thirds. So if we substitute in 2 thirds, all we simply do now, and the unit circle is solved for my y squared. That gives me a 4 ninths plus the y squared. And coming out, my 1 turns into obviously 9 over 9 minus bringing over my fourth four ninths over, I'm looking at a y squared equaling five ninths. But I need to find out what one you know, that's what y squared equals, so I need to take the square root of both sides. So the square root, when I take the square root of both sides, I'm left with I'm left with plus or minus the square root of five ninths, which comes out to being plus the square root of five over three or the negative square root of five over three. And that obviously is going to correspond to my, my y values, my negative square root of uh, 5 over 3. And this is going to be my positive square root of 5 over 3. And sometimes we're asked to find problems such as find the points on the unit circle whose two coordinates are equal. Well, the two coordinates are equal. Remember, we're ha talking about dealing with our x and our y. And if they're equal, we're saying essentially that y equals x. They're equal to one another. And going back to the equation of a unit circle, y squared, or I'm sorry, x squared plus y squared equals 1, we can simply use substitution and find out that x squared plus essentially x squared equals 1. We're trying to find out where the x and the y are equal to one another. And this obviously simplifies to 2x equals 1, 1, which gives us or implies that simply through x squared equals 1 half, or taking the square root of both sides equals plus or minus the square root of 1 half or plus or minus 1 over square root of 2 and after rationalizing the denominator that is equivalent to essentially plus or minus plus the square root of 2 over 2 or negative square root of 2 over 2 after rational, rationalizing the denominator so that implies essentially that we're looking for the, the point the values that make this true are these two values and they actually the line y equals x helps us define that point. That is where I have my two x coordinates and y coordinates are the same. So here I got the square root of 2 over 2, comma, square root of 2 over 2. And down here in quadrant 3, 
I got negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, negative square root of 2 over 2, right there. So that's basically where I'm going to be end up. And remember, this line is nothing more than y equals x. And this actually, we're going to talk about it, essentially corresponds to an angle of 45 degrees, or, or pi over 4. I measure angles on the circle starting with the positive horizontal axis, which obviously is located right here from 0, 0 to 1, 0. And positive angles are always measured in the counterclockwise angle. Counterclockwise is the direction, I should say. So, for instance, if I'm going to go from measure the angle uh, that has an endpoint of 1, 0 and 0, 1, I am going to be measuring that angle starting in the positive x-axis going counterclockwise to this vertical positive axis. I'm sorry, vert yeah, vertical positive axis. Here it forms a 90 degree angle, so that angle I see is going to be 90 degrees. The positive angle that corresponds to the measure that starts at the positive x-axis or positive horizontal axis to the negative horizontal axis forms, as you can see, a straight line, so that has a degree of a straight angle, and the degree of a straight angle, as we remember, is 180 degrees. And if I travel all the way around the circle, if I travel completely around the circle, I have formed a positive angle of 360 degrees, as we remember, going all the way around the circle is 360 degrees. So, over here, you can see that I have traveled I remember before I went to the endpoints of square root of 2 over 2 where they were equal and square root of 2 over 2 which I did in the earlier example this angle here is going to form 45 degrees with an endpoint there now I can also measure this with a negative angle a negative angle is nothing more than I start at the same place I always start at the positive x-axis but the negative I'm going to go in the clockwise direction so that's going to go me measure around that direction. And i got to figure out how far I traveled. Well, I know if I travel from here to here, I've traveled 90 degrees, an additional 90 degrees, and an additional 90 degrees, so that's 270 degrees, plus an additional 45 degrees, which gives me, because I'm in the negative direction, gives me 300, an angle of three, negative 315 degrees. Or you can think of it as traveling essentially a negative 360 degrees and an additional positive 45 to find out that degree. So positive angles are measured counterclockwise, while negative angles are measured clockwise, and we apply the negative sign that applies the direction. That simply and helps us find out what direction we're going. So if I want to identify an angle of 20 degrees, I start from the positive x-axis, and I need to create an angle of 20 degrees, which is roughly there which obviously lies in the first quadrant. To find an angle, or m create an angle of 100 degrees, I know I start from the positive ax axis, got to go counterclockwise, I got to go past 90 degrees, but just a little bit past 90 to form an angle of 100 degrees, which is going to be given me in quadrant 2. And to find, to draw an angle of 200 degrees, I know I got to go 90, 180 and just a little bit past 180 to get me to roughly 200 degrees which obviously is going to put me in quadrant 3. Similarly to identify negative angles such as a degree of negative or measure an angle of negative 60 degrees I still started the positive x-axis but now I have to go in the clockwise direction approximately 60 degrees which gives me an angle of negative 60 degrees. Same thing with negative 30. This obviously puts me in quadrant 4. Same thing with negative 30 degrees. I'm going to start again on the positive x-axis, go in the clockwise direction 30 degrees, which again puts me in quadrant 4. And that's yeah, that's me an angle of 30 degrees. To find the measure of 30 degrees, or I'm sorry, 330 degrees, I'm going to again start at the positive x-axis, but I have to go around 90, 180, 270, and an additional 60, and I get my angle there which is 330 degrees, which also corresponds to an angle of negative 30 degrees. They are congruent angles. They are corresponding angles. Thank you for visiting Enzo Math, and look for part two on the unit circle. See you soon.